What an honor it is to be here. Thank you, Father Wilds, distinguished faculty, esteemed trustees and guests, and of course, to the graduating class of Loyola 2010. Uh, I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about using esteemed and distinguished in the same sentence because I was afraid it would come out as extinguished and that's certainly not the description I would like to use. Certainly you are all distinguished and esteemed and it is an honor to be here. We all came to New Orleans around the same time, the spring or summer 2006, when it wasn't really the most popular thing to do. For me, coming to New Orleans felt like a calling and there must have been something bringing you here as well. Something special, something we can't necessarily describe other than we know we belonged here. Now, four years later, we can reflect back and say that we were a part of something special. And certainly the work is not yet done, but we were part of something special. We've all watched the city not just come back, but come back stronger than ever. We've seen the people come back with more passion and determination than ever before. And we've all been part of the Super Bowl championship. No matter where you're from or where you go, from here, keep New Orleans in your heart and remember what you were a part of and know that we are all linked together forever. As I look out at the young men and women, graduates of Loyola University class of 2010, I am so excited for you all. What you're about to experience will be eye-opening, certainly rewarding, and challenging at times. They say experience is what you gain when you don't get what you want. I can promise you over the next years, you will gain experience. You will not always get what you want, you will face adversity, but know that the sky is the limit as to what you can accomplish. There are some of you that will be doctors, lawyers, politicians, writers, artists, teachers, coaches, entrepreneurs, investors, and maybe one of you will even own an NFL franchise someday. I can tell you this, your best years are yet to come, but that does not mean it's going to be easy. In fact, I can guarantee you that you will face adversity along the way, and for most of it, it'll be the toughest thing you've ever experienced or faced in your life. I will also tell you that very successful person you will meet or talk to will say that it was because of that adversity that they were given the opportunity to reach new heights that they never thought possible. For me, it was my shoulder injury back in 2005, December 31st, 2005. I was playing for the San Diego Chargers. I dislocated my right shoulder going into an offseason in which I did not have a contract, did not have a job. When you think of that kind of injury, the quarterback position, there's not a lot of people calling or knocking. So at the time, I thought, this is probably the worst thing that could ever happen to me. But now I look back at the four years and I say, it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because it led me to New Orleans. There are many others that have faced that adversity and have been in those similar circumstances or situations. I'll give you a few examples. Steve Jobs, you might know him. He's the CEO of Apple. He was adopted as a young baby. He went to college, dropped out for his first year. He ended up starting Apple when he was 20 years old in his basement. But by age 30, he was fired from his position as CEO. When he had a falling out with his partner in the board at Apple. For the next few years, there was some soul searching for him. But in the end, he started another company. You might have heard of it. Pixar Animation, which ended up being bought out by Disney for almost $8 billion, and then by, an, then by another company that Apple ended up buying a few years later for $500 million. He was right back where he was 20 years at, as the CEO of Apple, and there he is today doing some absolutely remarkable things. What he would say, and what I've heard him say, is that adversity that he faced when he ki was kicked to the curb, so to speak, from the company that he founded where he really gained strength and more motivation to go forth and do remarkable things. Things that he would not have been able to accomplish had he not gone through those things at the age of 30. Another example is Ellen DeGeneres. We all know Ellen. She grew up right down the road. She used to go to Saints games at halftime and at the old stadium. I've heard Ellen talk about the moment when she came out and announced she was gay. At that point, she was having a pretty successful career. But after coming out, she was 
out of work for three years. People would not give her the opportunities they had before. To her, that was the toughest thing she had ever had to go through. But in the end, she was being true to herself. She then received a small opportunity to perhaps host her own TV show. And I think we all know how that has gone. She's perhaps one of the most, if not the most successful talk show host in history. Certainly being a New Orleanian, we love her to death. We know what she has meant to this community, not only to our community, but to the country of this world. She is a source of inspiration and somebody who would sit here and tell you that she had, gone, she had not gone through what she went through through those years. She would not be where she is today. So once again, the lesson being that adversity is an opportunity. Adversity will make you stronger. Adversity will mold you into that kind of person that you are meant to be. You all probably remember the kick in the Super Bowl, right? How could we forget that? I'll tell you the story behind that. We had two weeks to prepare for the Super Bowl and I remember Sean Payton came to the meeting room at the beginning of the two week preparation for the Super Bowl and said, we have a kick that we're putting into the plan. It's not a matter of if we're going to run it, it's a matter of when we're going to run it. It's going to happen and sure enough, it worked. Thank God. The lesson is, not a matter of if you will face adversity in your life, but when. So when adversity knocks you on your door and ceases and seizes it, sees it as an opportunity. For that adversity is being put in your life for a reason. It is God's way of providing you with the strength and the tools to face future challenges and to mold you into the person that He meant you to be. In the, in the end, it is this adversity that will allow you to accomplish things in life that you originally thought were reserved only for your dreams. My second piece of advice to you is this. Find what you love to do and then simply figure out a way to get paid for it. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Some of you out there know exactly what you want to do. And then there are others that probably have no idea. That's okay, because in a year from now, those that think they know exactly what they want to do, they may not have any idea at that point. Those that don't know what you want, might want to, have, want to do might have found your passion by then. My point is, be patient and don't settle. The only way to do great work is to love what you do as, as with every matter of the heart you know you will when you find it. My third piece of advice is to approach every opportunity with an attitude of gratitude and a mindset that whatever you encounter, you will leave it better than you found it. We have all been a part of that here in New Orleans, but why stop there? In everything you do in life, leave your mark. Be a great steward of the community and to society and to whatever business that you're involved and understand that part of your purpose in life is to leave whatever you touch better than what you found it. So leave your mark and leave it better than you found it. Number four, life goes fast. I was sitting in your seats 10 years ago. Now it's hard to think that when I was 10, that 10 years ago, it feels like it was yesterday. I guess my point there is, don't forget to enjoy the moment and reflect back on the journey from time to time. For me, standing on this podium after we won the Super Bowl was even a moment of, was a moment, one of the most defining moments of my life. We made it even more special is the fact that I was holding my son and the reflection on everything we had been through as a city and as a team to get to that point. As we watched the confetti come down and the world champions come across the Jumbotron looking and looking out at the people going crazy, beads flying everywhere, we recognized what a journey that we had been and how special that it was. There's no city, no organization, no group of people who deserve it more. I promise you that. The journey is not over. We want another one. Also, don't forget to enjoy the little things in life. Sometimes you get so f get going so fast. I feel like the last three months have been like that for me. Don't forget to enjoy the little things in life. Watching the sunset with one that you love. Taking a walk in the park. Sitting in rocking chairs on the front porch watching the street cars go by. Or throwing a ball with your child out in the front yard. You work too hard to not enjoy these little things.
My last piece of advice is don't forget why you were put here on this earth. We are all put on this earth to serve, serve others. Sometimes the more successful you get, people tend to forget that. It becomes more about how they can serve you as opposed to how you can serve others. So don't forget, no matter how successful you become, which you all will, to serve others. As you sit here on graduation day, I believe everyone can agree that we've all been blessed with some great opportunity in our lives. Be appreciative and respectful of those opportunities and never take them for granted. With that mindset, just think about being able to give back what has been given to you. Take that time to make a difference in this life of somebody less fortunate. It's amazing that the more generous you are and the more you choose to serve others, the happier you will be. Now for the words you've been waiting for, in closing, I'd like to leave you with a quote. I could have chose many quotes from presidents, CEOs, or philosophers, but I'm choosing one from my grandfather. He's 85 years old. He still lives on a ranch herding cows in East Texas. A quote I heard all the time from him when I was growing up was this. According to my grandpa, there are three types of people in this world. Those that make it happen, there are those who watch it happen, and then there are those who wake up one morning and go, what the heck just happened? So which one are you, is what he would tell me. So I leave you today by first saying congratulations to the 2010 graduating class of Loyola University. And now, let's go make it happen.